I bid you all good morning, good evening, and good night to wherever you're watching this transmission. Thanks for joining us, being part of the channel. It is I, Mike Martins, the voice of the Commonwealth, connecting the dots across the Commonwealth to figuring out what is going on. I want to do a follow-up video to that video we made a few months ago that China is sinking. Uh, its economic outlook does not look good at all. And what we're seeing right now and what's been happening in the last 24 hours is beyond what we anyone could, could have fathomed. And it's happening and it's happening quick. So what are they going to do? Are they going to pull the trigger on something else? Are they going to go to hot war? Because these are testing times when leaders need to play the blame game and blame other countries or other people or other neighbors. So China in serious trouble. Let's take a look at what's happening and let's dig in. And here it is, fire sale. Forbes reporting this very important fire sale. China's Warren Buffett races to sell assets. Major, major. The debt crisis that roiled China's great real estate market has spread to one of the country's largest conglomerates, Fosun, owner of the English Premier League soccer team, Portugal's largest bank, and Club Med, can no longer raise capital, so it must sell off assets before it defaults on its short-term debt. There it is right there, and it goes on to say something very interesting here. So there it is right there. There is the Dash for Cash. The Shanghai-based conglomerate divested money of its key assets this year to avoid deflating on, uh, sorry, defaulting on its own short-term debts. There it is right there, folks. So moving money around to to keep yourself afloat, selling off assets, and trying, just trying to, I don't know, stay in business, so to say. But that's what's happening right now. When you have someone of this caliber telling or selling or moving things around just to keep afloat, you know the ship is sinking fast. And to tie into that, RT is reporting here, uh, Chinese stocks and currency slide. Tech shares and the yuan have slipped on leadership reshuffle news. Now, I want to put this up there because it's kind of important. Now, leadership, like these stocks were already failing. These stocks were already seeing, weren't even close to seeing bottom uh, before this whole reshuffling news. I'm not trying to take the side of Xi Jinping. But four or five years ago, we put up a video saying that he's already declared himself to be emperor of China. So I'm not sure what these tech companies are talking about, about this reshuffling or the movement, because China was already in serious trouble back in 2016 when they were putting capital flow, capital flow caps on Chinese citizens, taking money off the Chinese shores and parking them into real estate into Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK and blue states of America. So people need to remember that, you know, this this is. This has already been something that's been going on for a long time. Are these stocks already cal already reaching a certain level where we're just going to have to blame the leadership again, even though he already made note that he was going to be emperor of China regardless? I mean, that's a third term. That puts him ahead of Mao, right? Mao Zedong, I think, had a third term or, or supposedly, right? So China's Yuan we uh, let's let, let's 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 open this up here. Chinese yuan weakened sharply on Monday, and the country's stocks had their worst day since 2008 global financial crisis. Just a day after the Chinese leader Xi Jinping secured his third term and undertook major leadership reshuffle, the uh, uh, renminbi hit a fresh 14-year low against the U.S. dollar on the onshore market. The Hang Seng Tech Index, which tracks 30. 30 largest technology firms listed in Hong Kong plunged almost 10 points. Shares of tech giants Alibaba and Tencent both nosedive more than 11%, uh, wiping a combined $54 billion off their stock market value. So there it is right there. And the sharp sell-off comes one day after the ruling Communist Party unveiled its new leadership for the next five years. But why is this a surprise this is what I'm not getting. I found videos from years ago. We're talking, Xi Jinping, the new, the, we talked about it on Mike in the Night, the new Chinese emperor. He's there to stay, so get used to it, folks. Why? Well, I got, again, they're, they're going to have to offset reasoning, not to spook investors or people, you know, not to freak, freak out. But it's a house of cards on a house of cards on a sailboat with gusts, 80-kilometer gusts of winds. That's what this is all built off of. Right. And it's been built off for the longest time, like in Western countries, Australia, UK, uh, uh, Canada, blue states in America. These countries are built off real estate. They're bought, built off selling real estate to wealthy Chinese investors. And majority of the homes get left empty and they're they just sit down there and they uh, collect money or they collect they collect money through, uh, uh, you know, va value asset values going up and, and 
trajectory of the markets going up and disenfranchising the middle class in all these countries and making a working poor society in the West. And here it is right here. Let it rot. Once flourishing middle class faces the end of a Chinese dream. So there it is right there. After ever going middle class has been embel uh, sorry, embelmatic, uh, um, embelmatic of China's ascent over the Diong Xiaoping kicked off. That was back in the 80s. Yeah, kicked off the economic transformation in the 1980s. That pro progress now risks being reversed as millions of people in China face uh, rising living costs, a fierce professional competition, a real estate bubble, and a sluggish growth. So there it is again, and they're blaming Xi Jinping, who was already announced that he's going to be the emperor of China. I don't understand. So so China's been transformed at a great speed, all this other stuff that's happened in the last 30, 40 years, and there it is right there. So what have we talking about right here? Wages not keeping up with inflation, housing out of reach. Our housing's been out of reach in the West for years, a working poor society ahead in the West. So how did people, local people, get into the markets? Well, they uh, uh, dangerously lowered interest rates to dangerous Frankenstein levels. We created this Frankenstein economic monster, and we cannot fix this. That's a good one. I even made a video about that a few years ago. Frankenstein economic monster that we created that's been destroying the middle class across the West and disenfranchising people through real estate. Oh, first-time home buyer loans, all this bull crap came in, interest-only mortgages. Now that stuff is up for refinance. Who's going to pick up the bill? Now, this is going to be a major issue, and I've been warning about this for so many years now. So there it is right there. Look, Target. What was that Target video I did there? Look, middle class disappearing. Can I, I did a video there, middle class get, disappearing. That was like seven, eight years ago. Wages not keeping up with inflation. Lower rates ahead. Wages versus productivity. Explained. Why I'm broke. Bank Banks versus wages. It just keeps going on and on. Uncharted economic waters ahead. How living costs compared then and now. Wages not keeping up four years ago. It just keeps going and going and going. Look, look at this. Middle class now turns to dollar store as wages not keeping up with inflation four years ago. And 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 it just it's a never ending. Canadians fleeing Ontario, Canada at frantic pace. Ontario now severely unaffordable. It just keeps going on and on and on. And one one country's issues creates issues for another country, especially when they're so heavily dependent or so heavily reliant on that country to come in and buy our real estate, to come in and buy buy our mines and not hire locals and, and come in and, and take over our production and stuff like that. So here it is. China's opened overseas police stations in the U.S. and Canada to monitor Chinese citizens. Now, I, I, I went to plate, I went to plate, or I went to bat for the Chinese citizens that denounced their Chinese citizenship and became Americans or Canadians or Australians and want the Western way of life to raise their kids under the principles that we were raised under, or I was raised under, or my family was raised under, and trying to make, you know, just trying to make good out of everything and being you know, the whole brotherhood thing. And there's a lot of Chinese that have come to make better, to become, to escape this crap. I got a really good friend that visits me uh, maybe twice a week. He's Cantonese. And he tells me, man, we escaped this and now it's becoming a bigger problem here in Canada, but it's not being seen as well. But in China, it's happening full blown. But in Canada, it's not being shown or people just hide the fact that their countries are, are crumbling and are falling under communism. So Chinese has the China has opened dozens of overseas police stations around the globe to monitor its citizens living abroad, including a location in New York City. There's a couple in Toronto. We, we, we covered this already when it broke weeks ago, but we also covered it on Mike of the Night too. So there it is right there. So there it is right there. Housing crisis. This is what we've been talking about here on the channel. Housing crisis. Chinese investors looking at Calgary to destroy middle class like Toronto three years ago. Uh, Chinese household de debt level uh, raises to record. People won't be able to pay their mortgages by 2023. That's in China, folks. I made that video two years ago, and it just keeps going on. No Canadian hires a Chinese-owned Chinese business in Canada, by the way. No Canadian hires for four years a Chinese-owned BC mine. There it is right there. So Chinese, Toronto housing market on fire. Chinese money has arrived in a frantic pace five years ago. If we go to Better Dwelling today and we check... Housing in Toronto is crashing. Housing in everywhere. It's it. 
if if you bought at the wrong time, they're looking at gauges at what time you bought. And if you bought at a specific time, you'd be underwater today. And what blah, blah, blah. And how much did you put down? Did you put down a, a nice, fair size amount so the principal could get tackled? You know, like it's just it's just it's it's crazy. And this is something um, that I've been very vocal about. And um, even in parts like look at this Portland. Runoff, a uh, runoff of Chinese money. Seattle invaded by investors. Porcelain, Portland housing now unaffordable. And, and it, it, because the Chinese, just like my Cantonese friend was telling me, the Chinese firsthand were seeing what was happening there. But here in Canada, they don't, they don't, they don't like tell this to people, right? But he was telling me in China, it, it was terrible. He had to get out of, he left Hong Kong like 12 years ago because he already saw what was going on, how it was headed, and the blatant, Corruption, the blatant everything. And he basically told me that Canada's becoming like that, but worse because nothing's being – people aren't you know, socializing about it. It's not on the news. People aren't standing up for their country or – and that's the problem we have, right? That's the problem we're having here, right? So you know, a lot of people leaving, taking their capital offshore. Let's, ty let's type in capital here and see what happens here. Uh, under our channel here home capital underwater I, I remember doing a video on capital outflows from china uh specifically uh back i think it was I, I, now i kind of want to see ah here we go five years ago so i kind of wanted to see the date on this urgent china china suffers largest capital outflow and my opinion more money will be parked in real estate and drive up prices and leave locals bought out. The whole western seaboard of, from Vancouver to San Diego will be unaffordable. That was five years ago, maybe longer, because I don't know why they track my dates weird here. Uh, so there it is. Uh, China puts cap on capital outflows. Canadian housing market to take a dive. UK housing crisis four years ago. So this is something that we've been, you know, we talked about the, the ghost cities in China, the empty apartments, building ap apartments not to live in. But just to buy them as investments. And that, unfortunately, has happened here in Western countries and cities. It's happened in Ireland and in Dublin. It's happened in Toronto. It's happened in Vancouver, uh, San Francisco. It's happened all over New York. Empty towers. Nobody own, uh, Nobody. It's empty and it's owned by one person. And it's some overseas investors. They got smart in Seattle. They started putting corporate numbers so there's no names tied to it. But that's what's been happening. And China is in a lot of trouble. Guys, don't forget to check us out on Mike in the Night if you want to call into our show. There it is, Mike in the Night. There it is. We just did 463. What a great show. Lots of good call-ins. Lots of people discussing their situations they're in that we can't talk about here on this platform. But there it is, 462, Mike in the Night. Four, uh, four, where's 460? No, 462... 461, 460. Yeah, just make sure I didn't miss one there. But there it is right there. You can catch episodes of Mike in the Night if you want to join us. Call in. Be part of the channel. And like and subscribe. Anyways, guys, China's in serious trouble. Ch China capital flows. Did that tip the uh, Did that tip the house of cards or the domino? The capital outflows we were mentioning five years ago. That started and got to the point where they are today. Where people didn't have confidence in their governments in China and basically packed suitcases full of cash and headed to the West? Or did it start a little bit later? Or was it the sickness that did it? Anyways, guys, I'm running out of time here. Mike Martin's here, the voice of the Commonwealth. Thanks for joining, liking, subscribing, and being part of the channel. Mike Martin's here. I have spoken.